mobility testing to so the ALAR and, and transverse ligaments. So let us do the transverse ligaments. So where, do, where does a transverse ligament attach to? Should they know this? Just making sure. Right. So where, where should it attach to? There's one that What's that? The occiput. The occiput? The occiput? Uh, no. No? Okay. Just one that goes around it. Transverse? Yeah. Yeah, it goes around it, but I don't remember where it is. Yeah. I thought that was the Aylar. Aylar is like from the top. Aylar goes up the top. Oh, no, never mind. I got him confused. Okay. I'm going to stop talking. So, <laughs> so the dens, right? I don't know if you guys can see it. But the transverse ligament is going to go transverse around the dens. So it's keeping the dens right on C1. Okay. So to test it, the patient's going to lie supine. What I'm going to do is grab the occiput and put them into a bit of cranio-vertebral flexion. So I'm going to put them into flexion, like upper cervical flexion. Okay. I'm going to stabilize their head. With my other hand, I'm going to get on C2, the spinous process of C2. And I'm going to translate, basically do a PA on C2. Okay. So, if let's say the, the ligament is disrupted, and I have them supine, and I put them into this upper cervical flexion, what that potentially could do is drive the dens where? More posterior, right? You have the dens and you have the spinal cord. And that's going to potentially create symptoms. And it could be bilateral numbness and tingling into their hands and their feet, whatever the symptoms may be. So what I'm doing now is I'm at C2, I'm relocating the dens back into its proper position. And so what should the patient feel when I do that? Let's say they do have symptoms. Symptoms should go away. They should feel better. And what you're feeling is, if, if, if it's a true positive test, is that there will be this kind of lag and you'll feel a clunk, as if you're putting it back into place. Hopefully none of you will ever feel that. Feel that. Um, but that's, that's what you're feeling for. Normally, it should just be a firm feel, firm end feel, right? It's, it, you're not going to feel any movement. should be fine. Okay? All right? Okay. So, can I... so you're going to get right on, on the occiput. I'm going to put it into a little bit of upper cervical flexion. Doing okay? So I'm just going to use my shoulder here just to stabilize her in this position. Now I'm going to get on the spinous process of C2. So I'm using my index finger here, right on the spinous process of C2. And I'm just going to do a PA on C2. And she's got a nice feel. No clock, which is good. Your index finger? Yep, yep. And I'm just doing a PA on C2. Okay? With the ALR ligament, so where does, where does the ALAR ligament attach? <laughs> to what? <laughs> where on C2? The dens. The dens. <laughs> so, so you have the ALAR ligaments, right, attaching from the dens and going, so we don't have uh, the, the, um, uh, the occiput here, so if this was posterior. So, um, well, let's keep it anterior, so here's the dens. So it's going to go in about 140 degree in an oblique direction, and it's going to attach to the occiput, okay? Because I'm going to use the occiput to check it, all right? Now, what, with the test... You really want to, what vertebrae do you think I'm going to stabilize? So it's going to be a side-bending maneuver, 
with the test. Which vertebrae am I going to stabilize? C2. C2. Okay. And if I stabilize C2, should I get a lot of motion with when I do lateral flexion, or should I get really no motion? Yeah, no motion. Really shouldn't get any motion. So what I'm doing is creating, because when I side bend, if I side bend, C2 is going to come along with it because of its attachment of the alar ligament, right? So if I side bend to the right, it's going to pull the dens, and C2 is going to move. But if I stabilize C2 and I try to side bend, you're not going to get any movement. It's going to be a very firm end feel. If you are feeling movement, is that a good sign or a bad sign? And you're stabilizing? Not a good sign. Would that be positive? That would be positive, yeah. Okay. So you really shouldn't get any movement. All right. Does that make sense? Picturing. Yeah. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And slide down. Now, what I've found, and and you know, usually, you know, the book will say our instructions like getting a pinch grip on C two and then side bending to the right and side bending to the left. But what I've found for me that that creates the most stability is my thumb. So what I will do. And I'll warn, uh, you want to warn your, your patients that this isn't going to feel comfortable because I really have to get in here on this and really stabilize it. So I'm, I'm almost on C2 and, and creating, you know, almost like a, a transverse direction. I'm really creating that pressure with my, with my uh, left hand. So I'm going to take her to the right. And so I'll get on C2, pinch grip on C2. You're on both sides. On both sides, yeah. Yep. yep. But I'm, I'm going to emphasize with my thumb as I'm going to side bend her to her right. So I'm stabilizing C2. That's it. She, has no, she is nice and solid. Okay? And then I'll switch hands. Is that a little uncomfortable? It's okay. It's okay? Okay. But sometimes, you know, with people with upper cervical dysfunction, they're going to be like, ugh, I don't like that. And then I'll switch hands and use my other thumb to stabilize C2 and then try to side bend her to the left. So I'm stabilizing two and side bend. She's got no movement. She is nice and solid. If I don't stabilize her, well, I need to get in there, hold that in place, and uh, she's nice. You okay?